Hi, everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. Just um, if you have a camera, you want to use your camera, that's helpful. I'm going to unmute you all. We have women going twice a week, it's not every day. Okay. Okay, so I see Kudis. Hello, Eliza. If you want to talk, you got to unmute yourself. You want button that soft? Welcome. Um, it would be good if we could see everyone, if you don't mind. And uh, we're going to start. Hi, Sarah, how are you? Hi. Are you like in a, look like you're in like a janitor's closet or something? What? <laughs> Getting away from the noise outside. Yeah, I know. Um, okay, so uh, let's get started um, because everybody's time is limited. I got your uh, I got your private email about the question. Okay. I'll respond. I'll respond separately. If there's time at the end, maybe we can look at it. Um, so without further ado, um, some of you I'm meeting for the first time. So um, I'm uh, Effie Kleinberg. I work at uh, two high schools in Toronto. Um, um, Best thing to do. I'm going to get feedback. If you hear me, if you hear me talking, then you can mute your microphone while I'm talking. And then, if you'd like to say something, just unmute and um, and pipe in along the way. That's probably the easiest way to do this, so we don't have echoes going on all around. Um, so the way that you know if you're muted or not is if you see the little microphone with a red slash through it. That means that your microphone's muted. Um, Okay, so I see Shira, Libby, Yehudas, Lisa, Sarah. Okay, so we got a nice, uh, a nice crowd here. Um, so I'm gonna jump into screen share so you can see um, everything that I'm gonna show you today. And uh, let me start that right now. Um, it is this one. Okay, um, can everybody see my screen? Just give me a thumbs up if you can. Awesome. Okay, so uh, I want to start with uh, just a quick agenda. Um, we're already in the afternoon, so looking forward to learning together and continuing this journey. For those who are hearing me for the first time, um, hopefully you'll join join me and us in this group uh, in the coming months to learn more and to experience more of uh, some of the tools that and ideas and strategies that we're going to share. Um, and uh, yeah, Hanukkah is coming up, so I just wanted to wish you all a uh, and happy Hanukkah to you and your families. It's a, it's a great time of year. Um, I'm curious to hear, I think everyone here is all in Benos. This is the whole, this is, uh, there isn't anybody from the other school here. I'm just curious to hear if someone wants to just pipe in, introduce yourself, um, what's your role in the school, and um, what you're doing in your classes for Hanukkah um, in the coming in the coming weeks. So we can start um, in order as I see it. If you wanna, if you're available and you can unmute your mic, um, Yehudis, do you want to start or somebody else want to share? Don't all jump at once. I'll pipe in. Uh, Sarah okay. Leiwetz, Sarah Leiwetz, Dine, Benos, Stroud. Um, technology coordinator here. So just listening in to see what our teachers can use. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Sarah Leia. You should all know. Uh, 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 like uh, so that, that's proof and that I work in, the, I actually work in a school. I'm not like, uh, <laughs> you got the intercom in the back. Um, uh, so uh, thank you. Sarah Leia, I was just going to say, oh, hi, Libby. How are you? Nice to see you. Um, I was just going to say, uh, you all probably know this, but just my short meeting with Sarah Leia, you have an amazing, tremendous resource in the school already. So I'm like kind of irrelevant because I don't, I don't live in Baltimore and I don't work on the ground there in school. Um, and I'll just say from the get-go, please feel free to continue the conversation on email, on the WhatsApp group. Um, once, now that you see me and you know who I am and you'll hear some of the things I have to say, um, don't wait until the next time we talk uh, in a in one of these uh, webinars or yeah, whatever we call them. Please come, please come to the NPR. Oh my gosh. 
<laughs> um, but yeah, please be in touch via email on any questions, especially if there are any things that you didn't get today or we didn't get to, um, or you're dealing with something currently and you want to talk it through, I'm happy to, uh, to meet on the side about those things as well. So let's keep going through our introductions. Um, so Sarah Lay introduced herself. Let's get somebody else uh, who's in a classroom and wants to share something that they're doing uh, for Hanukkah um, with their students. Oh, hello? Yeah, who's that? That's Javi? Uh, Javi Goffin, yes. Hi, Javi. Hi. Um, I'm, I teach 7th and 8th grade language arts up in Oz Israel. Um, I, one thing, it's not specifically technology related, but uh, one of my classes is itching to have a debate about a story we just read. Which story? Uh, nothing but the truth. Not familiar. I mean, it's an, oh. it's an Avi book. Okay, got it. Cool. So, how is that debate going to take place? Uh, well, they're going to spend the days of Hanukkah preparing for it and preparing arguments for one side of a topic that will be decided on, and then um, we'll prepare to have the debate, and uh, we we'll pull in some administrators or something to watch it and judge it. Cool. Well, call a kavod for doing something out of the box. That's always a uh, uh, somewhat of a risky thing to do. Could be a risky thing to do. And uh, when it works and it works well and it has a good structure to it, it's probably an awesome, uh, awesome experience. I'd love to hear how it goes after. If you could update me, I'd love to hear. Sure. Um, who else do we have? Aliza, go ahead. Um, I teach sixth grade language arts and 10th grade history. Um, I'm actually not teaching the 10th grade during Hanukkah, but the 6th grade, we're going to be, we just finished reading the Miracle Worker, so we are, we will be watching a movie on it, and the a Cereal Box Book Report. Not really Hanukkah related, but something, you know, fun, I guess. Wow, that's interesting to teach in a middle school and a high school. That must be very, uh, obviously different, but challenging in different ways. Yeah, it's nice to have different, you know. Kinds of students, you know, yeah, you're you're obviously a great teacher if you can do if you can do two different levels of schools at once. <laughs> um, okay, Javi, nice to meet you. Now I see your face. Lisa, Sarah, Leah uh, introduced herself. Um, who else do we have down here? Libby and Shira. Anybody want to pipe in? Say hello. Hello. I don't know if you can I am here also. Okay. So let's start with Libby. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, good. Want to share something about um, what goes on in school on Hanukkah over there? Well, neither, neither Shira nor I are teaching. Right. Uh, programming, so any, interesting, any interesting programming that takes place in the school? Um, not computer related. Not we're we're going broad. We're not just going to talk about that. Um, there's there actually in the high school we do something every single day. The GO is in charge of it, and every single day they do something small that is um, a small activity that is um, Hanukkah related. Cool. I actually want to pipe in. Um, we actually created an independent learning program for our middle schoolers. It's called the Burn to Learn. The girls receive the choice board um, with different Hanukkah-related research projects that they could undertake. Some of them are in a Lamude Kodesh subject area. Um, some of them are in general study subject areas, and I'm excited about that. Cool. Thanks for, thanks for the piping. Okay, did we not hear from anybody yet? Oh, who was here also? We got the whole team. This is awesome. Um, okay, I, I just wanna just share a reflection before I start. Um, I'm just answering. If somebody is near you who this or can direct or how to turn on your video, that would that would, that would be helpful. Um, there's somebody you need to turn on. Okay, so um, I just wanna share a reflection now that I have um, so many people from one uh, school. Um, I shared this with the administrators and some of you are on this call. You have an awesome school and you're working in an awesome school and I was so, um, I so much enjoyed being part of the, the day there and the time there. 
and the resources that you have already and the buy-in that you have already for, for, for things that you want to do in the school to move the school forward in certain different types of areas is just amazing. So if you're a teacher in the school, spend more time talking to your administrators. They're amazing resources. They're very passionate about Judaism and Jewish education. Um, I was very inspired by it. So I wanted to just share that with you. I really, uh, I really felt like I was in a, um, a great school that really is looking to do great things and you're doing great things already. Um, so continue what you're doing, continue your, your great work. So I'm going to jump right in. We're going to, we're going to do about 30 minutes of, uh, some training. Um, feel free to ask me questions along the way. I see some stuff coming through in the chat over here. Um, okay. Thanks. Thanks for, uh, responding. Um, and we're going to look at a few, a few different items. Um, what I'm going to do for our group um, is show you how to use Google Classroom. I know I did a small demonstration for some of you last time uh, when I was there uh, in person, um, but I want to do a little bit more and push everybody here to think about a class that you might try to use this for. Or if you're not going to use it for a class, think about a unit that you might try to use this for. It could be a unit uh, that you might plan for February. It doesn't have to be um, next week, but it's a good way to put things into practice, to put the learning that we're going to do into practice, to actually try to do some of the things that we're going to, uh, that I'm going to show with you. So we're going to focus on these three things over here. Um, the first one is leave Word and PowerPoint behind, PPT stands for PowerPoint, and join Google, not because, uh, um, I'm being paid by Google, um, but because there are so many benefits to once your school is already um, introducing Google education, Google apps for education into the building with Chromebooks, with all the other things that you're doing with giving students their own um, uh, student ID. I think that's what you're, uh, you're, you're working with over there, not necessarily email, but working with a student ID that in and of itself gives them a uh, identity that they can use to work with many of the tools that are available out there. If only you knew about them. I know some of you are already doing some things that are great and amazing. Some of you are, are using some of these uh, applications for testing. Some of you are using them for, um, for the way that you uh, give assignments or teach your lessons. Wonderful. I'm going to push you a bit to think about ways that you can organize, um, organize your information. So we're going to start with um, Google Drive. So let me actually start from step one for those who have never seen this before. Still not working. All right, but um, can you hood us here? As long as she can hear. Okay, so after this, if someone can work one on one with you, Hudis, just to show her how to, how to get it up and running. Um, as long as you can hear and see my screen, that's the most important uh, part of this. So we're on the, we're on the Google homepage. Um, I'm going to go to my, I'm here in Canada, google.ca. Um, and up here in the corner is the apps store. Let me just close this down for a second. Um, the app store. So here I have all the apps that I use and the one that is the storage, the storage application is called Google Drive. So I go into my Google Drive. This is my, uh, this is my personal email. Um, and, uh, and there's a whole bunch of things that pop up, pop up on the screen. So those who use this before, great. I'm not going to be doing too much introduction on what it is. It's a storage place. The same way you have your files uh, somewhere on your computer and you store all the files there. This is a place where you would store files as well. But in particular, it's a place where you would store your Google uh, associated files, um, Google Docs, Google Slides, Google Forms. We're not going to go into all of those today, but we're going to look at um, one or two things that are features of the of this drive that you're looking at. Um, I'm going to pause in a minute for questions, but I'm just going to share one uh, insight. And then if anybody has any questions, I'll pause and let you uh, let you ask anything you'd like. So over here in the corner, on the Google try on the Google Drive homepage, there is a symbol that looks like a gear icon, and that takes you to the settings. So there is a setting that is not a default setting, and the setting um, is called open it up, convert uploads. Okay, it's right there in the middle of the screen, and what this setting does, mine is checked off. 
but yours will not be checked off. So if you actually have a Google Drive, if you're able to do this while I'm talking to you, that's great. You can open up your Google Drive and kind of just follow what I did, open up the settings and go into this, um, into this box that says settings. And then where it says convert uploads, this checked box allows you to take any documents that you have created, whether you created them on Microsoft Word. This, uh, by the way, what I'm about to say only applies for PC users. It doesn't work for Mac, MacBook users, um, but it is a very handy tool. And it's one of the ways to begin a, a process of transferring your files from your hard drive onto uh, the cloud. Google Drive is a cloud. It's up in Shemayim somewhere, and all of your files are stored over there. So you have uh, this this item that you can check off, and when you're done, you click it off. Mine's checked off. You hit done. That will save the setting. Then I want to um, take a file that I created on my hard drive. So I'm in a um, I can go into my, let's say I just created something on Microsoft Word or I created a PowerPoint, which I believe everybody here has used Microsoft Word or PowerPoint before. I want to bring it into my Google Drive. So how do I add a file or a folder that I have on my hard drive, bring it into my Google Drive? So I, over here, there's a few ways to do it. The simplest one is where it says new here in the top left corner of the screen. And I have a few options here. I can create a new document. I can create a new, this is Excel. Um, and this one that's called, hold on, this is blocking it. And um, this one is called Google Slides. That's the Google version of PowerPoint. This is the Google version of Excel. This is the Google version of Microsoft Word or Pages, but it's closer to Microsoft Word. Over here, I have an option that's, that allows me to upload a file. So just yesterday I had a, um, I had a presenter in my, um, sorry, I did that very quickly. I'm gonna explain what I did. Um, I had a presenter in my school who um, was using a PowerPoint. They sent me the PowerPoint. Um, I have that PowerPoint on my hard drive because I downloaded it from my email. And then what I did was I, I took it from my hard drive and I uploaded it into Google Drive. Now you saw that uh, little loading uh, symbol in the bottom right corner that represents the file being now transferred from my files into the cloud. And what happens now is that file, which was once upon a time a PowerPoint file, has been automatically transformed into a Google Slide file. I know it's very cool, a lot of ooing and eyeing. And the same uh, process could be done with a Microsoft Word file, the same process could be done with a Microsoft Excel file, all of those, as long as you've turned on the setting that um, that transfers, that converts the upload, that converts the original file. Once that's clicked off, that will allow you, and I'll pause in one second for questions, that will allow you and enable you to start transferring your files. The reason I started with this is because if you want to become a person who's going to be using Google more, you have to become more comfortable with using the Google applications. Google Classroom is a wonderful tool for, I'm gonna show you in a few minutes, all the kinds of things you can do with it. It's an amazing tool for resource sharing, for organization in class, for students being able to access anything that you've ever taught in a semester, in a year, in a course, in a unit. It is amazing and it's, and it's always there and the students will always be able to access it as long as they're connected to the, um, to the devices that they're using. The only, drawback of using such a thing is when you haven't produced content that can be uh, that can be accessed by Google applications. So I'll show you some examples in a moment, but I'm going to just um, go off my screen share so I can show you my face again and then uh, open up for some questions now. Um, okay, I see one question. Does it change with margins? So um, the answer is as follows. Microsoft Word transfers, I would call it 99.9%, .9%, especially if you're an English teacher. It does a very uh, good job. Sometimes there's a font that you may have used in Microsoft Word and it's not available necessarily in Google Docs. So it might not transfer exactly, but I would say it's 99.9% .9 of the formatting of the, uh, the fonts, the colors of all of that and try it yourself. You'll see, you can try it yourself. You'll see, you'll see exactly how it, 
um, how it displays. You, and and uh, and once it's done, and by the way, you can you can transfer multiple files at once. So let's say you have an entire um, course in Shakespeare. I don't know what you teach over there, um, in Chumash and whatever the course you're teaching, and you have 50 Microsoft Word files that you created for a class. You can grab them all in one shot, throw them into your Google Drive, create a folder called Chumash, second grade, fifth, fifth grade, eighth grade, tenth grade, whatever it is, and then all of those files. It might take more than uh, 12 seconds, but maybe it'll take three, four minutes, depending on your connection speed. All those files will transfer in one shot. So there is a wonderful, um, you may have to go in. And so some of you might be wondering, well, how does it transfer Hebrew? So Hebrew text and Hebrew letters, uh, it's improved. It's not 99.9%. .9%. I would put it closer to a, uh, to a 90%, but, um, but it definitely transfers it uh, to a pretty, pretty good, pretty accurate, pretty similar mirror degree. And, um, and the last thing I want to say on this, um, and if anybody has any more questions on it, otherwise we'll move on, is why? Why, why, sh why do I have to do this? Why can't I just use Microsoft Word and print my, print my documents and give them out to kids? And um, so number one, I mentioned already, you will never lose this. Your students will never lose the opportunity to be able to access this because it's stored in the cloud. And number three, which is the biggest one, and that we're gonna will segue us into the next part of this is collaboration. That to me is what differentiates Google applications in general with the rest of the uh, file um, creation applications that are out there. So Microsoft Word is wonderful, but only one person can work on Microsoft Word at once. You can only have one student working on a document um, or one teacher working on a document at one time. If you're using a, any of the Google applications, you can share those with other people, with other people's student accounts, uh, student emails or, or teacher emails, however you're sharing these, uh, these applications with each other, and you can work on them simultaneously. I'm taking a pause. Does anybody have any questions about what I just showed? You can unmute or you can type them into the chat on the side. Should we keep them as or resave as Google files. So if you have a backup copy of the, uh, let's call it Microsoft Word document, if you have a backup file, if I'm answering this correctly, you'll let me know. If you're asking something else, just let me know. If you have a backup file of it in your hard drive, then there's no harm in, uh, in only uploading it as a Google Doc. You haven't lost the original file, it still exists on your hard drive. All you've done is you've transferred it into a Google Doc and now whenever you're gonna work on it, you're going to work on it um, in your browser using, uh, using the document and the original file will remain untouched. That will never be changed. The only difference would be um, and I wasn't going to show this now, but I can mention it in passing. There is a way. My question is about the X. Should we rename? Yeah, rename it. It doesn't need to have the X at the end. You don't need to have, that's semantics, if that's what you're asking. Um, you don't have to rename it. You can call it whatever you want. It's just, um, it's just a, um, it's just a document that, um, that was transferred. Um, there is a way. I don't remember if I showed this. Is it it is considered a Google Doc. Yes, it is considered a Google Doc. And um, uh, the only, this is what I was about to say, there is something that's called offline uh, editing, which means if you don't have an internet connection, you can edit a Google document. And then when you get reconnected, the document will automatically sync. In order to do that, you have to I have a problem. I left the file open on office computer. Another person came in and deleted all contents. How could I prevent this? <laughs> yeah. So Google Docs is uh, is really powerful because it it store it automatically saves and stores every keystroke. So every time you hit the keys, delete, enter, space, write a paragraph, take away a sentence, it's all uh, it's all stored there. I've used this before to catch students cheating um, because they're like copying and pasting what other kids used into there and you could literally see uh, what they've done um, but in general it's actually a really great way to check for work because each student has an ID and each student you can see what part of the what part of the page they've um, they've edited on 
Um, so those are some uh, those are some features of that. I think in a future discussion, I'm happy to show you uh, more about the offline editing. It's a little bit beyond the scope of what I wanted to do today. So if you're, with your permission, I want to jump to the next item on the agenda, which was um, let me share my screen again. Hold on. Uh, this one. Okay. Um, uh, this one over here, creating an assignment using Google Docs or Slides. So Hanukkah is coming up. You may uh, you may want to um, you may want to do something uh, with your classes for Hanukkah uh, Hanukkah learning, and um, you might want to think about some, doing something creative, doing something different. We already have someone who's doing a debate uh, with their classes based on a book that they uh, that the that students read. And you want to um, and you want to go and do something creative. So the first thing you would do now that we're all uh, bought in on using Google Drive for our file creation is you go back to your Google Drive. Um, if I was uh, if I was teaching um, a Hanukkah unit, I might create a folder that would be called um, Hanukkah Learning. So the way I did that, I'll do that one more time, just so you see over here where it says new folder that's a new folder and when i open that up i give it a title um hanukkah learning we'll call it okay and then over here on the bottom we have created a folder called hanukkah learning and um anything that i will end up using and i'll show you how to do that in a few moments anything that i end up using in a classroom that i want to have posted in a place where students can access it I will create in this blank space. So if I was creating a, uh, an activity where I wanted students to present something, just for argument's sake, okay? I'm gonna give you one example of uh, an activity that you could use. It's a simple activity and it's, uh, it's a really fun thing for kids to do. Um, so I'm gonna use an application called Google Slides, which is like PowerPoint, except that the same way like I explained in Google Docs. People can work on it at the same time together in real time or not in real time. Um, if you're using the, uh, the devices that you have in your school, so you would bring in the devices, you would bring in the devices into uh, your classroom. Um, and this is something you would have to set up before class. So let's get um, what I just said about um, setting up your setting up your assignments before class is an important point because like any lesson that you're going to give if you walk into class and you don't have your lesson prepared you're not really going to be able to create it at the beginning so this is a think of it as a worksheet think of it as uh as an in-class assignment something that you want the students to be doing while they're in class and in this case, this is just going to be my made up example. Feel free to use this example if you'd like. It's something I've done before. It's what I like to call a collaborative presentation, where every student in the class is going to prepare one slide. I'm going to show you in a minute how you can um, share this with a classroom so that all the students can be working on the exact same one. And, um, <clears throat> and then what the students are going to be responsible for is creating one slide of information, of uh, of, um, of content, of photos, of whatever it is that you're asking them to do, eventually at the end of the uh, presentation, you will have, if you have 10 students, you'll have 10 slides. If you have 15 students, you'll have 15 slides. And each slide will represent the content of one of uh, each student. Or you could have them working in groups on a, on a, on a show, um, all kinds of different ways, obviously, to do that. That would be up to the discretion of what would make sense for your particular classroom environment age level, et cetera, how much support they're gonna need um, from the teacher, from each other. Those are all things that you have to definitely uh, consider. I'm not gonna go into all the details of how this application works because we're um, gonna wrap up in about 12, 13 minutes. I wanna get everybody out before uh, by 12.55, that was the promised time. So I wanna just um, show you one or two features and then do the third thing, which is show you how you might share this in a classroom setting. So we're gonna call this, because we're uh, all learning together, we're gonna call this the Benosi Israel um, Hanukkah presentation. Okay, huh? didn't work. I'm just giving it a title. 
Um, uh, that's not spelled right. Okay, so now I have my title. Now the document exists. I should just mention that a document in Google doesn't exist until you've given it a title. So if I go back to my Google Drive, here it is. Okay, now it's blank, so you're not going to see a preview of anything over here. But once I add something to the to the slideshow, um, the preview of it will show up over here. So um, I may want to, if I'm uh, the teacher, I may want to use the first slide to give some instructions about what I want the students to be doing, or I could give that in a separate document, um, just for interest of time. Um, you know, share one uh, one thought one quote or thought um, that you like to think about on Hanukkah, think about or share with your families on Hanukkah, okay? Again, this is very uh, um, primitive, the way I'm presenting it. You can add color, you can change the fonts, all of that. Is true. You can have different kinds of backgrounds. You would you would probably do all that if you were if you were using this in a classroom setting. Okay, so now I've created my first slide, um, and what I want to do is I want to open this up so everybody who's with me right now on this on this uh, on this learning experience can also um, add a slide of their own. So uh, there are many ways to do this. I'm going to show you just one of the ways to do this, um, which and they're not easier or less easy. They're all easy options, but I wanna to jump to uh, show you how this would work with Google Classroom, okay? So I have a file that's created. That part is done. And now I want to, how do I move this? Uh, there we go. Um, I want to go into Google Classroom. So many ways to get to Google Classroom. The easiest one is just to type in classroom.google.com. I go to the website. I'm going to send out all of everything that I'm sharing with you now. I will send you an email after with all of the info and all of the instructions so that you can try it yourself. I'm here in my Google Classroom. If you've never used it before, it's quite user friendly. Spend five minutes with it. You'll learn a lot just by playing around with it. So I'm going to create a class. Um, this class is going to be called, um, and I'm, we're actually going to use this, Benos Yisrael. Uh, we'll use this throughout the year, and I'm happy to add things as we go along. Why is it not letting me type? Oh, hold on. I'm not joining a class. I apologize. I am creating a class. I read and understand. Da, da, da. Okay. This class is going to be called Benos Yisrael. Um, uh, let's call it EdTech uh, Training. Okay. We're going to create this. And now, um, I have created a class. Now, all of you are on your uh, own individual devices. So I'm going to encourage you to come and join the class. The way that you join the class is you go um, to classroom.google.com, like I just showed. And when you get to that screen, I'm going to show you again that screen, which looks like this. I'll give you the course code in a second. There's a plus sign that says create or join. Join the class, and here's the code over here, D2MQA18, and that's how you would join the class. Um, if you are um, not doing this manually, you're not having the students sign on because they don't know how to type or how to use this, or um, uh, Saralea, I don't know what the, I don't know what the uh, way that you add people to a class is. Is there a specific way that you do it? Is Sarah Leia there? Did she hear me? I don't know. Okay. We'll find out after. Anyway, once people start joining, uh, their, names will, uh, their names will appear on the screen over here. The other way to do it is you just invite the students. So um, we can add, this is just one email I know. I invited Ahuva. Oh, I can't invite students from this domain. Why not? I'm not sure. Okay, we're gonna have to figure that one out. Um, I'm not sure why that's not letting me. I didn't try this before. Anyway, oh, someone's answering over here. It says my code is invalid because it's locked. Aha, uh -huh. I think this might be a domain issue on your end. All right, 
Nishkeferlech. We're going to just continue without it for now. And uh, I'll speak to Sarah Leah after and we'll figure out how to create a classroom where we can all, we can all share resources together. Um, yeah, so, let, so Sarah Leah, let's talk after about it, okay? Um, but I'm just going to quickly, in the next five minutes, show you um, how you would, unless I can do it without the Google Classroom. I think we should be able to do that. Let's do it this way. I think I should be able to do it this way. Let's put in people's emails here. Uh, this should work, Sarah Lea. Um, I don't even know everybody's names on here. Libby, um, Aliza, right? There, I got that one. Who else is on the call here? Let's look. Um, let me just open this. Hodis. How does the Huda Speller do her email? So like this. There we go. Um, who else is on your Javi? Like that, like that. Who else do we have? I miss anybody? Shira. Is it S B E? Yeah. Okay. So this is this would be a way to um, to to collaborate on something without using the Google Classroom platform. I'm just simply sharing the document. Um, you will all have just received an email. Go to your email, uh, the email that I used over there. Probably not your personal email, maybe some of your personal email. Okay, Ahuva Heyman's the first person on the document. So if I'm the teacher, I might want to um, already generate um, some slides. This is going to be a Hoover slide. So a is going to work on this one. Um, and uh, this would be the next person, so on and so forth. This would be one way to do it. Or you can have the students create their um, create their slides on their own. Um, so a you're going to work on the second slide. Sarah, you're going to work on the third slide. And essentially what you're doing here is you're having the students create and own something that uh, something that they are going to share that their student that their fellow students can see um let's create a few more um, who's on here now we have shira um you are all doing great work by uh um by joining on let's see anybody else join us here um we had javi oh, somebody posted a nice picture here this is great Okay, so this is uh, a wonderful way also for um, teachers to collaborate. Um, I've done this many times. You can't always get all the teachers together in one room at one time, but if you created a Google Doc um, or one of these and uh, you had all the teachers um, decide to, you know, come onto the document at a certain time of the day, um, they could work together. They could um, talk to each other. There's chat. There's chat functions. Um, some people are chatting over here. Let's see. I didn't receive the email. Okay, hold on. Let's try again. Let's see. It's your Benosi Stral email, Javi. So go on and see if you can do it from there. Um, so far, only three people have come on, but that's pretty good. So Ahuva is like a, an expert over here. Light up the night, enjoy your kids, 30 minutes tech-free. After Chanukah Licht. Beautiful, awesome. Um, yeah, great stuff. So you see some of the potential with this, and it's a really wonderful way for, um, for kids to uh, collaborate, work together. There's Javi. Um, and to work on, uh, and to work on uh, these things together. Now, in your school, because you are a one domain, you would be able to create, um, you would be able to create this classroom, and you would be able be able to add your students to it, and you would be able to start sharing. Uh, and in this case, um, I'm just going to show you how to do it, even though none of you can access it right now. Um, if I wanted to give this as an assignment or wanted to just post it and have students work on something fun during Hanukkah, I'm creating an announcement. Um, I'm going over here to the resources, and now that I've already created my um, my presentation, I simply add it. Um, and we're going to just give it the same title. Uh, 
Hanukkah presentation and I post it. So if you were all part of the classroom, you would have, at the moment that I just did that, received a notification that Effie Kleinberg has just uh, posted an announcement and you would be able to then access this at any time, at any place to be able to work on it from uh, the comfort of whatever device you're working on. How do I get to my own computer screen? Um, I think you just close the, just close the, um, the, the Zoom. Oh, who's in your notice? Okay, you're all doing wonderfully. I'm gonna pause now because we have about five minutes left um, and we, uh, we did a few things. I'm just gonna do a quick recap um, and then I'll take any questions that you might have. So today we, um, we looked at basically three things, I would say two and a half things, um, but I think we did a pretty good job. We learned how to uh, transfer files, which to me is one of the first things you, uh, you should start doing if you haven't started doing already, um, to become more comfortable and familiar with the Google Apps. We did that um, through Google Drive through the settings feature. I'm gonna share this document with you and I'll put in uh, some step-by-step uh, -step for those of you who'd like to try and work in it on your own. The second thing that we did um, is learning how to create a document in Google Drive that you might want to use in an assignment um, setting, Google Doc, Google Slide, something collaborative where students are working on something together or alone. And then a very, very brief introduction to Google Classroom, which we will have to, um, we will have to uh, put on the, not back burner, but on the agenda for our next, uh, for our next moment. So let me just open this. Uh, how do I get back in? Stop. No, I don't want to go back to my video. This one. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, three minutes left. Does anybody have anything they'd like to share, ask? It can be something specific, it can be something general, or if you need to process all of this, because it's a lot, um, feel free to continue the conversation um, after, but I'll, I will be following up with, uh, with some, more, uh, some more info and um, step-by-steps for everybody um, after. Anybody want to share questions, comments, feedback? I do. Go ahead. Uh I, I did something very interesting. I'm new to Google, um, to Google Classroom, but I did something very interesting a few weeks ago. Um, I created a survey. We had an activity. Hold on one second. We need somebody to mute. Everybody else should mute. So I created a survey uh, in Google Forms, and then I put it into Google Classroom. And the students went on there and they, they filled out the survey. And then I got the report, and, um, which gave me a lot of information that I was looking for. It was very, very interesting. There were questions that we did that were uh, multiple choice. And there were also questions that were short answers because we really wanted to know about feelings. But we didn't want to reveal what the purpose of the survey was. So we did both. It was, it was an amazing, very, very telling um, activity. Cool. Um, I'm curious, what was the overall subject of the survey? There was a video, there was a, um, a hookup with, uh, I don't know how many Basiakos across the country about technology. Mm. It was for 11th and 12th graders. And there were several speakers and there were several videos and there were several songs that girls had created and um, and girls watch it. it was a long program it was about two hours worth wow so we wanted to hear um, feedback what the takeaway was also Reflection. takeaway was yeah was have good. you I'm just curious have you gone back to the girls with some of the things that you heard from them no. to share with them what you heard from them no no because that was really not the purpose the purpose was really more for us to see what excited them, what doesn't excite them, what cool. they feel they could connect to. It was really more for us, the information. Yeah, yeah, you learn a lot. These surveys are very, uh, um, did you have any multiple choice sections or were they all? Um, no, 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 there were a lot of multiple choice because I didn't want them to feel that it was what I was looking for. Right, I understand, I understand. So, I understand. so you were able to see those charts with those trends and. Right. 
but it was great. Awesome. The awesome. Very cool. About afterwards, you know, told me, you know, this percentage of students really like this. So it was also, it was very interesting. Very telling. Right. And uh, you got full participation on that? You made it yeah. mandatory? I, everyone, yeah. Um, I didn't, this I would do differently next time. I didn't make any answers mandatory. And some girls uh, okay. not, so not required. So then they just quickly right, run through I, it. Like, yeah. The questions that I really wanted the answers to, there were girls who skipped it because right. I didn't make it mandatory. I would change that next time. Okay. Yeah. The default setting for Google right, Forms is right. no questions are mandatory. Right, right, right. Yeah. Um, that was great. Okay. Anybody else want to share something? 30 seconds left. Questions? Okay. I assume not. Otherwise, uh, it's been a pleasure. This was great. For a first time, I really, uh, I'm glad that we were able to, first of all, thank you all for coming and making the time. Um, I'm hoping we can uh, do one again, maybe in a few weeks or January. I don't know what, when you're, uh, if you have a break, you probably have a Hanukkah break at some point. Um, but I really enjoyed it. I'm going to send you all another email with uh, just a summary and some walkthroughs, some step-by-step -step of some of the things we did. Um, and the conversation started. So feel free to, uh, to be in touch. And the last thing I would say is just go out there and, um, you know, call a vote to, to Libby for, uh, for jumping in and doing something like that. And for everybody else who's been experimenting, um, there really is a lot of rich, uh, rich stuff that you can, you can get done with some of these, uh, some of these tools. Obviously, you have to be strategic and careful and sensitive and thoughtful about how you're doing it. I'm 100% a proponent of that. And we can have a future session to talk about strategic thinking and how to do it responsibly and how to talk to your students about being responsible. Those are all important. But for a start, I would just get out there and try something. Try something that we did today on your own. Maybe try to transfer some of your files. Maybe try to, next time you're about to create a, uh, you know, a document, instead of creating it on uh, Word, use, use uh, Google Docs or something like that. Um, and I'd love to hear how it goes. So please keep me, keep me posted, keep me in the loop. And uh, any questions you might have, be in touch. Otherwise, Ferelichen and happy Hanukkah to you all and your families. And thank you so much for, uh, for being part of it. Bye-bye.